Having brush, I'm sure. But I'll just show you a quick way to do it on your on your hook, on your vise, in two seconds instead of using one of those machines and all of that. But it is quicker to build them on those machines and have them stocked away, and then when you tie it, just do it. Okay, so I'm going to just do the dubbing brushes first. You can use a, a piece of wire here. You can use any a big old dirty hook that you've got lying in your... You just need something to tie some thread onto. Sorry, I'm starting smaller flies. Okay, so there we go. Start your cotton off. This is just to make a dubbing brush. Your technique here doesn't have to be brilliant. Take a bit of copper wire. The two colors that I'm going to work with is the Scud Olive. That's the lighter color. And then the Scud Olive Brown, which is the darker color. Very much sort of the colors of a, of a damsel. Just tie a little bit of copper wire in, just to get it fast. Come down relatively, say, six, five, six inches. Wind the copper wire around your wire a little bit, just to strengthen the cotton. Okay. That just makes your, the wire just makes your dubbing brush a bit stronger and more easy because when we weave with it just now, if you just tied it with cotton, it's quite difficult to work with. You make your loop straight forward, come back here, and just reattach it to the hook and just get that out the way. Take your dubbing spinner. You've all seen these little ones. You can, you can, I like the heavy ones because they spin better. Hook it in on either side. Done there. Keep your finger in between. Okay, there we go. And let's just make the darker one first. You can put a little bit of glue or print in between. It's not really necessary. And just get your dubbing in between you. It does take some skill to do it like this. A lot of people like to use a little dubbing table. It's a bit easier. Spin this thing in the bottom first. And let it come through. You can take a lot more time at this and get it better and rush it like I'm rushing now. Okay. Just cut it off. Just cut it off. Put the one there. Take your copper wire again to make the other brush. I wonder why I couldn't see what I was doing. <laughs> Suddenly I can see it again. You can take a lot more time and effort. You can also put with the darker one, which I have done before, you can put a strand of peacock hurl in as well. It actually makes a nice sort of it's a little black streak in the, in the loop. It's actually quite nice in the brush. Do you tie a lot of brush flies? Have you had, you've always had people come in here and show you how to do them, eh? On the machines? Haven't you? I'm sure Murray would show you. There's a whole kit you can buy. It's very simple. You can make it yourself too. It's not a, it's not something that's difficult to do.
Now you're making that out of the same green? No, this is the lighter green. So we made a darker one. So you're, you're twisting it around, Mike, and then you're cutting it off afterwards. So yeah. It, instead of using, not everybody is going to have one of those machines. So you just make the brush yourself. Mm. <laughs> yeah. No, no, you just cut it off. It's just that I've normally got a couple of old hooks or something lying around in my fly box, and I just use those normally. Just take your hook now. Okay, now I'll tie the fly quick for you. It's not difficult. Most of you can tie a red eye damsel, I'm sure. I like using a sort of a chenille eye. Okay. What size hook is that? It's a 12, eh? Okay, the tail I'll use is a, I just want the tips of the marabou. Can you see that? Yeah, I want, I just want to work with these tips here. If you put a thick bunchy piece on, like this section over here, uh, that's more dragon tail. So a damsel is a very fine, fine tail with just a lot of action. and sparse. You notice I go under the tail a couple of times. It keeps your tail nice and high riding and also keeps the tail from wrapping and prevents it from wrapping okay we used we traditionally tied red eye damsels with normal pearl crystal flash pearl but there's no there's no doubt about it that uh, it was actually Mark Yellen who came onto this I was with him in Queenstown fishing those waters there a couple of years ago and we tied a couple of red eye damsels using this UV crystal flash, and it did catch more fish. Uh, surprising that such a small little bit of crystal flash can make a difference, but it did catch more fish. So I'm just going to put that one in there. I think he played a bad shot there. Okay, I just tied it in, still continuous, because when we finish the flower, it's a bit easier that way. But you can tie in two little pieces if you want. Okay, there she goes there. I tie the one one now. One dubbing brush on the one side. This dubbing brush is a bit sparse. Okay, now you'll notice when you tie your, your dubbing brushes in, you've actually built you've built the shank of the hook up a little bit here. So when you when you do your abdomen coming along here and you're coming towards your thorax, you may find that now it suddenly gets skinnier towards the thorax and it shouldn't do that. So if you want, which I will do in this occasion, just in front of those dubbing brushes. You can use a little bit of dubbing, or you can use a little bit of chenille or wool, or whatever you want, just to build the shape of your 
of your fly up because remember the abdomen is quite important with a with a damsel and you want a slight carrot shape coming towards the thorax okay so I've done that just end your cotton off okay now now okay, I need to move the where's the yeah. I can I can weave from this side. Yeah. Then I'm gonna be your in your way. So let me sit this side. You all know the the this weave, it's a straight it's the same way you tie your shoelace. So you just go one over the other. I'll show you here. So you go you're just tying a knot, a normal knot. Did you see that? Tied a normal knot. Now whichever yeah, it's a very easy weave. Whichever colour is on top, the one that goes over and through will be the color that stays on stop on top of the shank of the hook so when you tie that way that will say now remember now they change around now remember you've got to work back to front not the same way so to start it off i want the dark color on top there it is push it through the eye of the hook there's the dark one on top do you cross it underneath or on top on top, on top. yeah so once it's linked like that yeah. you push the eye of the hook through the middle of the knot Okay. We have two loops and it goes through the dark loop. Yeah, it goes through the dark loop. Okay, so we go again. I want the dark on top. Now, most people, it feels natural to do that because that's the way you tie. You've got to go and put the olive on top. You've got to tie your knot back to front. And then it'll be on top again. There it is on top. Pull it neatly, put it in place, tighten it up. And so you go. Very, very easy. When you... I think you guys do tie the fly now, hey? Yeah. I'll just walk around and show you. It's a very, very easy weave. It's probably the easiest weave you can ever do. Mm. Just remember, whatever you want on top must be on top here. I get blinded here by this light. Yeah, now, no, it's this one that catches me. When you do a weave, you must remember, if you notice how when I pull it, I keep it very parallel to the, to the table. If you start pulling your, your weave this way, then the, the woven body will be skew on your fly. So when you weave, you must always keep your ends parallel to the table. Otherwise, your weave will start moving around on the shank of the hook. Yes, and tough. That should be enough. How close do you go to the eye, Mike? Two thirds, I'll tie. So then leave space for the thorax. Can't see it. There's basically the marabit tail, so that's two thirds, one third left mm. for the eyes. Okay, put your thread back in. Bring both of them forward just to trap it off. You can't undo, work back to where your last one was. Now, a lot of you will tie eyes on a fly. Okay, just checking that the, the dark olive is nicely on top. But can you see that on the... You can't see that in the... Just hold your hand here. There it focuses. Yeah, you can... Well, first of all... You'll see these little pieces here. Those are the little filaments that will be on the side of a damsel. And if you see them swimming, they actually move. You can definitely see the dark color on top here. If you turn the fly underneath, you'll see the light color underneath. And it makes a very flat weave, this. It makes a very flat weave. Now, a lot of people tying the, the dragons and the damsels like to use dumbbell eyes or those nylon eyes or a piece of nylon with two little beads on the end or whatever. 
But the moment you start doing that to a fly, you you must think of the fishing of the fly, not not the tying of the fly. Because the moment you put anything on the front of that fly, it changes its action and it then becomes a jig. And that's why beaded flies are so popular and catch a lot of fish because they have a jigging action in the water because their head drops always mm -hmm. and the tail waves behind it and you pick them up and that's how they go. If I'm going to fish a dragon or a damsel, I like to fish it as neutral as I possibly can and so that it swims neutrally. So I very, very seldom will use anything other than chenille or wool eyes on a dragon or a damsel. Okay. V-Rib, have you tried that? Um, Sorry? V-Rib at all, have you tried that with the eyes? Yeah, I have, but it's it's also fine. It's not as heavy. But I don't like to put chain eyes or that nylon with the two little beads, you know, on either side. I just think it affects the action. You watch how it swims and the, the fly dives the whole time. And if you watch little damsels and in particular dragons, they do a lot of sort of a dart and they drift. They do a lot of sort of suspension. They sort of suspend in the water and drift around. Okay, a... As I teach the, the, my staff, a chenille eye is very easy. It's a figure of eight. But the mistakes a lot of people do is when the chenille goes around on the outside, it naturally comes back this way. And it feels easier to do it that way, which is two loops the same way. You must complete the figure of eight, and that way your two eyes will stay straight on the hook. Okay. So let me just show you what I mean by that. Tie your, your chenille in now. Sometimes on a smaller fly it becomes difficult. A lot of guys will just put a piece of red chenille straight across. It's just easier. Right, so if you do your figure of eight, now I'm going to accentuate it, exaggerate it. That's, there I've done it that way. A lot of people will just bring the chenille back this way. Then the eyes will be skewed. So if you do a loop that way, then the second loop must come that way. Okay. There's your figure of eight. Okay. So if it feels natural, it actually feels easier to do it that way. But then your eyes will always be skewed. Okay. And this is not the right chenille. I wanted to tie everything out of Mia since they sponsored it. So I didn't bring any of my own stuff. I went to the shop there this afternoon and I bought this all out of their store. The other chenille that works very well is the tough chenille. This is sort of a rayon chenille. Tough chenille is much tougher. And for those that are new at this figure of eight eyes, you can actually make a bigger eye, like I've done there now, and you can slowly pull the chenille back to get the right size eye. It's actually quite easy for beginners to do that. Okay, now I've got a tight exactly to size. Right, so let's get this one going. Happen there. Take times over your figure of eight eyes because it's actually quite important to eye. Just catch the chenille behind the two eyes and cut it off like that. Right, so basically, there you can see the two eyes. Sorry, I'll knock the camera there. There's your two eyes. You just go back to your marabou, the same little piece, you take a nice sort of little clump. Yeah. Also again working with the points. Pull your points together. Like I've done there. I like the marabou in the thorax as opposed to dubbing. I think it's got a lot more action, a lot more movement. Tie it in over the eyes. And just bring that mess back there. That's it. Move the thread forward. 
Back through the eyes. Careful when you do that so you don't disturb your eyes. Alright, take your marabou. Palmer it probably two or three times. Building up a thorax. I think that was enough. Come through your eyes. Separating your eyes nicely. I don't like to wrap too much around the eye of the hook. <coughs> These chenilles isn't the best for eyes. see it again. Okay, now here was that double strand of crystal flash that we left. Bring it underneath your fly. You want it to come underneath the fly, under the two eyes. There we go. It's actually just doing, watching the, re the cricket game again. Why, wow, who was playing? <laughs> It's the South Africans, <laughs> weren't <laughs> What are you doing there, Mike? Tying the flesh will be underneath the body. Mm -hmm. okay. Then you bring two of it up. You bring the same strands back up. Okay, it's not a brilliant tight fly, this. Okay, now work with the fly a little bit, get the eyes flat. That to come down. Now, from, from my perspective, if I had to judge the fly, my dubbing brushes weren't good enough. If, you, if I had to judge your guys' flies, I'd look at that. What I will definitely look at is to make sure that the green, the dark green or the olive is on top. The light green will definitely be relevant underneath. You can see the, the lighter green underneath there. Okay, the fly must be relatively flat. If you actually wet it, you'll see it's very, very flat. The eyes must be very prominent. I want two prominent eyes and a very long, thin, sparse tail. So once that fly becomes wet, it's got a lot of action in the water, if you can see it like that. So if you actually had to see the fly wet, it takes on very much the damsel look. There. Okay. Do you sometimes find when you're fishing this fly that the fish takes short? It nips the tail. If, if your tail is... It, if your tail is very sparse like that, that's all they'll see in the water. They will take it properly. They'll take it at the eyes. Because most insect, most fish will take where the eyes are, not where the tail is. If you are finding the odd fish banging you, it's normally a small fish, you can trim the tail a little bit. But if the tail is fat and bushy, like on a woolly bugger, you find that more often than you will on a sparse tail. On a sparse tail. And I like, I like the little woven body because it gives you the two colors. You can do that with lava lace or vinyl rib. You could do it with two wools, just two simple wool. You could buy an olive and a green wool and work it together like that. It's a very simple weave. It's the same knot you use on your shoes. So it's very easy. Whatever's on top. You brown and light brown one. Yeah, you could do a brown one, yeah. Put a brown marabou tail in. Maybe then put um, that herring... Uh, crystal flash, it's sort of that like bluey black or black crystal mm. flash in the tail, not UV, but just change. But the secret is very definite eyes, flattish body, and a long, thin, sparse tail. Mm. Can you turn it just so that the camera shows it from the top? Like, do you want those two front uh, pieces of crystal flash to stand up like that? Yeah, or? yeah, because it pushes pushes water. Oh, okay.
the water with the water on the retrieve will, will fall flat and then they move up and that's that's a nice bit of action out of the fly. And you fish it slowly with a floating or an intermediate line? Uh, yeah, you, I, I don't like intermediate. I fish DI3 rather um, because it sinks straight. The most intermediate sink with a belly, so you only fish the fly for 30% of the time in the right place. Um, but yeah, uh, depending on where you are, I mean, you, you could be... You could be in a dam that's got very sharp or very deep weed banks. And then I'd actually fish a size 8 damsel, a bigger damsel, and I'd fish it deep down along those weed banks and bring it up. Um, a method that I found very effective with a red-eyed damsel, which is not normally fished, is by actually going to find those deep drop-offs on the weed bank, especially if you're in a kickboat, or the deep holes. And you put the red-eyed damsel onto dropper, and you put a... Uh, sorry, onto point, and on dropper you put a small hairs here or a little flashback or something to that. You can use even a DI7 line, I often do. Throw a full reach, full cast into the deep water, let it go right to the bottom, and literally put your, the rod under your arm and scream the damsel back towards the weed banks. And what I believe you're doing is the damsel's out of its depths in theory, and it's getting out of that open water to where it's protected. When you fish the damsel right between the weed channels, I fish it then very, very slowly. Just twitch it, twitch it, and move it through the weed banks. But if I throw it in the open water off dam walls and that, I screen the damsel back to the edge or back to the weed bank. I'll often fish right over a weed bank and throw five or six meters other side the weed bank, let everything sink, and then scream the damsel back and into the weed, right into the weed, and then pull it out, clean it up, and throw it over the weed bank again. And that's just fishing technique as opposed to so much the fly. But it does work. It definitely works. That's great. And this is the red eyes. Why red eyes? It's a good question. And, and you know, 